Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 8, Questions 22 to 24. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at the retrocyclization of cyclobutenes to form butadienes. And the awesome thing about this unit is that we don't require prior knowledge in this um, uh, reaction. We just have to apply the key rules uh, that they do provide in the text. Now, bear with me. There's going to be a couple of rules that are going to be confusing, but hopefully by the end of the video, you'll understand uh, the principles behind them. So first, the first rule I think it's important to note is that these reactions can be promoted either thermally or photochemically. Now, the reason why that's important to note is that um, this is going to affect whether the uh, groups are going to rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now, one of the most important things I want you guys to learn from this session today is that rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise is different to in and out um, positioning. So in and out positioning relates to the activation energy or the differences in activation energy, whereas rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise has to do with the promotion of the reaction as either photochemically or thermally. So keep that in mind. So what it shows us is that in the um, diagram provided, we can have rotational direction of attached groups as in or out. So for the preference of in or out, um, they tell us that it depends on the nature of the R group attached. Now I've drawn it this way because I want to show you how they're confusing you in the uh, unit stimulus. So that actually explains to you because it looks like the rotation of the arrows and the out and in are the same thing in the diagram they present, but they're not the two di di completely different things. So firstly, um, with the actual uh, differences in activation energy, you can see there's a table there. There's positive values and there's negative values for the R groups. We know that the positive values are going to have an inward rotation, whereas the negative values are going to have an outward rotation. So note whether or not it's going to be outward clockwise, anti-clockwise, or inward clockwise, anti-clockwise, it depends on whether or not the reaction is going to be photochemical or thermal. So keep that in mind. So we're also told that the carbon, so if we say this group and this group, the differences between these two groups or these two groups, the one of the greatest value is going to go in its preferred direction, whether it's going to be in or out. So let's keep all of these ideas in mind and these key rules. So now that when we tackle question uh, 22, we can um, work through this sequentially I, uh, and systematically. I don't expect you to get it straight away. Hopefully after 22 and 23, you'll be ready for 24. But let's see. I mean, I'm sure you're all quite capable. But let's see um, how you go with the first one. So if, with 22, it says consider the retrocyclization of a cyclobutene for which R1234 are the same arrangement of hydrogen, chlorine, and cyanide and the chlorum atom will. So if you take a look at A, B, C, D, they're asking us about two different factors here, rotation and um, pretty much because they've got photochemical and thermal, it's going to be clockwise and anti-clockwise. So they're asking two separate things here. So let's look at it from, let's say, a photochemical and thermal point of view. So, so for D, it says rotate in or out depending on whether it's going to be thermal or photochemical promoted. Now, the reason why D is incorrect because um, thermal or photochemical promoted reactions dictate whether it's going to go clockwise or anti-clockwise. It says that in the unit stimulus. It doesn't dictate whether it's going to rotate in or out. That is activation energy differences. So the answer for D is incorrect. If it said rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise depending on whether the reaction is thermally or thermochemically promoted that's correct but it doesn't say that it's talking about the rotations in or out which is activation energy not the photochemical or thermal promoted reactions so these are incorrect so let's take a look at actually the activation energies so let's write them out the differences in activation energy for hydrogen chlorine and cyanide so hydrogen is going to be zero chlorine is going to be 10 and cyanide is going to be minus two. So remember what we said at, in the beginning, the rule, if you have groups, let's say it's hydrogen and chlorine, or it's going to be chlorine and cyanide, the one with the greatest sum of um, difference in activation energies is going to have 
uh, the it's going to be most preferential for rotating. So we know that chlorine is a positive, so it's going to always rotate in. So any combination. So it doesn't matter whether the chlorine is going to be with the hydrogen or the cyanide. It's always whatever the group it's going to be, it's going to rotate in. We don't know if it's going to rotate um, uh, clockwise or anticlockwise because we haven't been told if it's photochemical or thermal, but we know that it has to rotate in. And so that means it's either going to be A or C. So we know it can't be out. Oh, well, C says rotate out, or it can't be C because it's not going to rotate out. It has to always rotate in because it's always going to be um, the highest value. So 22 has to be A. So if we take a look now at 23, this is where I know some students, the, the training rules fall off. But again, if we're systematic now with our, um, our clockwise, anticlockwise activation energies, we'll get the right answer here. So it's telling us, read the question carefully, what arrangement of hydrogen, CO3, and chlorine is produced by the photochemically promoted reaction. So photochemically means we have to have one side that's clock, clockwise and one side that's anticlockwise. So let's just draw this structure here. Okay. So this is important to note. Okay. All righty. So this is something that I have to stress. They kind of tricked you. I kind of alluded to this in the beginning. So they tricked you when they had here in their diagram out in, in, out. You might think that it relates to these structures here. That's not true. Remember in normal chemistry, if we're looking at structures in 3D space, when we draw the dashed lines, it means the compound is behind the page. Whereas if we draw the thick line or the thick, arrow, it's coming out of the page. So what we have here is R1 is going into the page, R2 is coming out of the page, R3 is going into the page, R4 is going out of the page. So you can kind of think about that 3D. Now it tricks you in the, in the, image, in the figure because it says out, in, in, out. What does that mean? Now this is important. So it's telling you that for a, on this side of the reaction, so of this side of the molecule, if you want to rotate inwards, it's a clockwise direction. Now, on this side of the molecule, or this side of the cy uh, cyclobutene, if you're going to rotate clockwise, it's going to go outwards. So that's the most important thing to note. So keep that in mind. So the in-out is separate to the clockwise anticlockwise. So, um, oh, sorry, the, the clockwise anticlockwise in-out are separate and these dashed lines and thick lines mean two completely different things. So I'll kind of explain it here in this example, or question 23, or hopefully it makes sense now. So let's just draw what the molecules should look like. So they've got this, this. It's either going to go out, in, in, or out. Okay, so let's look at it systematically here. So remember what we said. So how about we do the um, uh, activation energy? So the difference in activation energy, this side, so this side, CF3 and CL, the difference between the activation energy is going to be CF3 and CL is going to be 9. The difference on this side is going to be CLH, which is going to be 10. So remember what we said, the side of the greatest sum is going to have um, rotate in its preferred direction. That means this side, because chlorine has the uh, is positive, and it's a greater number. So chlorine is going to, um, uh, sorry, because it's a positive number, what we're going to have is that we're going to go into the page. So chlorine is going to go into the page. Now, this is important. So chlorine currently, it's shown as a black, thick line showing it's coming out of the page. Now to move chlorine into the page, we have to rotate it. Remember what we said here, if we're moving on this side in to out, it's clockwise. But in this instance, we're going from out to in, which means it's going to be anti-clockwise. So this side is going anti-clockwise. So we know that this side has to be in, so chlorine has to be here, hydrogen has to be here. So that's this side done. Now let's go to this side. 
this because this is anti-clockwise and because we're told this is a photochemical promoted reaction this side has to be opposite so it has to go in a clockwise direction which means obviously the chlorine which is the most positive or the chlorine which has the um the greater number it's going to uh go in its direction so it's going to be preferred in that direction so that means if it's going to go clockwise so in this instance our chlorine is coming out of the page and if it's going clockwise, remember here, we're showing that clockwise on this side goes into the page. So, I mean, I'm looking at it in a different way. You could just say, yes, chlorine has the larger number than CO3, but you could also just say, well, if it's going to be rotating clockwise, this side, actually probably forget that bit about what I said earlier. Just keep, I don't want to confuse you. Just, just know that because this is going clockwise, that means the CO has to flip. So if it's going clockwise, we're showing that clockwise goes into the page. So if it's going into the page, the chlorine is out. That means chlorine has to be in now. So chlorine has to be in. So that means chlorine has to go in and the CO3 is going to go out. So that's what our molecule should look like. So therefore, 23, the answer is going to be C. So... Hopefully you've got the idea because now we're going to do it again for 24 and hopefully by the time we get to 24 you're going to understand it. But just keep in mind there's two things we have to look for. The activate, well we have to use the activation energy and the photochemical or the thermal reaction that's going to affect the clockwise and anticlockwise. In and out, clockwise and anticlockwise are not together. They're two different things. So hopefully we'll get it now for 24. So we go to question 24. It says for the following structure, consider the set of molecules for which R is those molecules. For how many of these molecules does the photochemically, so remember photochemically, one has to be clockwise, one has to be anticlockwise, promoted reaction result in the R group rotating in. So let's draw it here. Yep. So we've got our cyanide group coming out of the page. And we have our R group, I'll just leave this blank for now, going out of the page. And what they don't do here is they actually don't include the hydrogens which are going into the page. So I'll probably just draw it like that, that's the way they've got it. So we've got our hydrogen into the page, our cyanide out of the page, hydrogen into the page, and our R group out of the page. So if we want our um, groups to go into the page, Remember, um, let, how about we first um, calculate the atomic, um, well, the, the differences in activation energy on this side. So this is going to be, uh, what are we going to have? Minus 2, minus 0, so it's going to be minus 2. This side is going to be minus 2. Now, the easiest way to say, okay, if it's going to go into the page, how about we pick the groups that are going to give us a value that is um, obviously going to be um, positive. So we have to pick groups that are going to be positive. So if we group, pick groups that are going to be positive, therefore we have to pick the OCH3, the CL, and the CH3. So if we pick, say, OCH3, the uh, CH3, CL, CH3, so they're going to be positive. So they're always going to be a positive value. They're always going to be greater than the minus two. So, I mean, the um, it's it's going to have the greatest sum. You might argue as well, hang on, what about CO3? Because CO3 is going to be minus one. It's going to be a greater number than minus two. That's correct. But let's leave CO3 up here for a second. Let's just draw this compound here. And the product of the reaction is going to be... Okay, so that's in, out, in, out. So let's just do it here. So these are always going to be positive. So it's always going to be larger than this. So because they're positive values, so um, we've got OCH3 is going to be 14, 10, um, 7. So it's always going to be positive. So it's always going to rotate in. So if it's always going to rotate in, that means, remember, because they're currently, the R group here is rotating is, sorry, is currently out of the page. To make it rotate in, remember, to go out, it's clockwise. To go in, it's anti-clockwise. So it's got to go anti-clockwise. So that means this side is anti-clockwise. So we know H is going to be here, and this is going to be our OCH3. 
is going to be a Cl and it's going to be a CH3. So because it's going anti-clockwise, this side has to rotate clockwise, which means whatever is here is going to go into the page now. So we know that our cyanide is out. It's going to go into the page. So its cyanide is going to go here and our hydrogen is going to go here. So that's what the product would be. However, you might be asking, what about CO3? Because CO3 is actually a number that's greater than minus 2, which means it's going to be preferential for CO3. Correct. But this is what's important to note. Because CO3 is actually a negative number, it's minus 1. And because we know that the, um, it says here that the carbon force the magnitude of the sum is higher, rotates in its preferred direction. Because CO3 is a negative value, CO3 is going to rotate out. So we know it's going to rotate out. So you're going to flip it, which means it's not going to be inwards. So that's what we need to understand. So that's why CO3 isn't correct, because it's going to be the complete opposite of what we just did here. So that's why the answer is 3 and not 4. So hopefully you've got an idea of how to answer these questions. Um, I know it's tricky because the reason why I know it's tricky because I've had a lot of students ask me, how do I do this? It's a very tricky question. But again, if you just take into account, they tried to trick you here, that there's a difference between in and out and clockwise and anti-clockwise. So that's what you have to understand. If you can understand that, you'll get the correct answer. So um, you could you could also play around, and you might want to play around with NO2 and CHO if you'd like. Um, but play around with those, and you'll see that obviously they're going to be different, and they're not, they're not going to give you um, the R group rotating in. It's only going to be the OCH3, CL, and the CH3. And try to play around with these and see why. Um, they're not going to give you the in. So obviously there's going to be out, out, out. Um, but in saying that, if you're still having difficulty, you can post your comments and queries in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.